Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Ned Bellavance, Ned1313 on Twitter, and welcome to the Daily Check-In for October 20th, 2020. It's Tuesday. That means it's Terraform Tuesday, and we're going double HashiCorp here because we're going to be talking about using Terraform to configure the new application or service or whatever you want to call it that they introduced called Boundary. I talked about Boundary in a previous video last week. So if you missed that, I'll throw a card up here just so you can kind of get up to speed on what Boundary is at a high level. We're going to get down into some of the details this time by actually firing up an instance of Boundary, the dev server instance of that, and then adding some resources to it by using Terraform. So that is what we're going to do in today's video. Before I get into that, I just want to mention that I still have my Terraform certification guide. So if you're looking to get the Terraform associate certification from HashiCorp, check out my cert guide. It is down in the description. It's only 15 bucks and I keep it updated as new releases of Terraform come out. The current release is uh, .13, so it's updated for .13 when .14 hits you know I'm going to go back and update it so it stays up to date. And if you buy it on LeanPub, you get the new version as it gets updated. So if you're not quite ready to take that exam, it doesn't matter. You buy the you buy the guide, you start reading it, and then it gets updated and you get an update. Isn't that nice? <laughs> anyway, uh, before let's before we get into the topic today, I just want to say hi and do a little check in. How you doing? How's it going? The week has been progressing interestingly. You may notice that Mondays have become best career advice ever, and I've been having guests. That's been exciting, lining them up. Uh, hopefully, you're kind of making your way through the week. Mondays are always a little rough, but I feel like Tuesdays are the sweet spot. It's my favorite day, in part because of Terraform and in part because of tacos, and I'm having both of those today, so good day for me. All right, so hope you're doing okay. Let's get down into the topic. Let's start with Boundary. Now, as I described in a previous video, Boundary is basically secure access management for devices that you want behind some sort of protected wall. But you want to provide dynamic access to those things. And the way that you could do that is by taking advantage of what Boundary is able to do. Now, because it's a HashiCorp product, it integrates with their other stuff. And the big first integration is with Terraform. So without getting too deep into the details, let's first start up an instance of that dev server. So let me go ahead and share out my screen. And if you want to start up an, in, an individual instance of Boundary Dev, you're going to need to have Docker installed because it actually uses a Postgres backend. So it needs to spin up a Postgres container. So make sure that you have Docker desktop up and running before you do this. And then the command is simply boundary dev. That's all you have to do. It'll go spin up that Postgres container. It'll start the boundary binary server in dev mode, and it'll use that Postgres container as its backend storage. It also creates its own internal KMS. So there's a few things going on here. We'll get into the architecture of boundary later. There we go. Okay, so it's already come up. And when it comes up as the dev server, it spins up a UI on port 9200 on localhost and it sets the admin as admin and the password as password. There you go, admin and password. That's pretty much all you need to know. If we jump over to the browser, let's go ahead and just uh, hit up port 9200 on localhost. And that will take us to the logon page. We'll go ahead and put in admin and password and authenticate. All right, so now we're in boundary. We've got the dev server up and running. I want to run through a few things just so you get a feel for how this is. Now, this is kind of like a multi-tenant thing. So you can have multiple global levels. So right now we just have a generated global scope, which is what we're at now. And then below that we have an org scope. So it kind of goes global, org, and then within orgs you have a project. So let's go into this org and see what's here. All right, so we have an automatically generated project in here, and we also have users, groups, roles, and authentication methods. So those are all tied to the organizational scope. When you set up a new organization, that gives you the opportunity to create different authentication methods that you'll use inside that organization. You can then take create users 
and associate them with accounts in those authentication methods so that they have a way to log in. And then those users can be granted roles directly, or you can create groups for those users to be a member of and then assign those groups roles. So you can create one or more roles in here. And it has some built-in ones here, the administration and the login and default grants. So that gives you an idea of the structure a little bit. What's inside a project? Well, you can have one or more projects inside an organization. And within that project, you have three basic categories, sessions, targets, and host catalogs. Sessions will be active sessions that are going through Boundary right now. So we don't have to worry about that at the moment. Targets, well, we'll get to that in a minute because more importantly is host catalogs. So these are the hosts that you might want to connect to and they're organized inside a catalog. So let's go ahead and click through this first catalog here and you'll notice that you've got hosts and host sets. So you can have one or more hosts that are inside your host catalog and you can place those hosts in hosts sets. So if you have hosts that are similar in some way, you can group them together in a host set. All right, what do I do with this hosts and host set stuff? I want to create targets that I could connect to. And what's in a target? A target defines some details. What port am I connecting over? What's the maximum duration I can have a connection going? What's the maximum number of connections I can have to this particular target? And then the host sets define what the back end is supporting that target. So you have to create a host set with a host in it and then create a target for someone to connect to. So that's the whole soup to nuts of boundary really fast. Now, what can we do with Terraform? Now with Terraform, we can do a bunch of different things. So switching over a little bit and let me bump this up by one so it's a little easier to see. There's a provider for boundary. This provider it's called Boundary, isn't that nice? And you specify things like what address to connect on, the authentication method to use, and then the username and password basically. Now, eventually there will be other supported authentication methods, but right now it's just username and password. So bear that in mind. And then let's say we wanna create a user and some backend servers, some hosts to go in a host set. So we'll define a user, me, and we'll define some backend server IP addresses using 10.1.0.1 and 10.1.0.2. All right, what kind of resources do we create? Well, let's create a new global scope. This is all the way at the top. A global scope can hold one or more organizational scopes. So we'll, just, we'll, just, we'll call this my taco empire, my taco empire. And below that, we're gonna create one organizational scope. So this is my first org that's inside my larger global scope. And within there, we'll call that Taco Hut One. This is Taco Hut One, and we'll reference under scope ID, the global scope that we just created. All right, cool. Scrolling down a little bit more, we need to set up an authentication method for that org. So remember, orgs have users, authentication methods, groups, and roles in them. So we're gonna create that authentication method. First, we're gonna create a password type authentication method because that's the only method that's supported at the moment. Remember, this is a 0 0.1 release. <laughs> and uh, we'll set the type to password because that's the only kind we, we can. And the scope in this case is going to be that org, hut one, that one that we just created. Okay, scrolling down a little bit more, let's create an account inside that authentication method. So the account, I'm gonna give it my username, Ned, and a description, and we know that the type is password, and we know we give it the login name, which apparently has to be in all lowercase, so just good to know that. We're gonna set the password to password, so if I wanna log in, my password right now is password, and then we have to refer which authentication method we want to associate this account with. Boom, now I have an account, but I don't have a user to associate with that account yet, so let's create a user for me. We're gonna create a boundary user. Hey, look at that. And again, we'll use my name, Ned, put in a description and the account IDs that this user is associated with, well, we just have the one. So we'll make that association here, boom. And the scope for this user is also gonna be that same org scope, hut one, great. Now, what if we wanna give me some admin permissions? Let's create a role. We'll call that role admin and it is going to be an administrator role. Now, remember, this is also at the organization level. So our scope down here, also the org scope, 
we're going to list the principal IDs. So this is the ID of each user that's been created in a list. That's who we're giving this role, to, uh, assigning this role to. And this can be empty. You don't have to assign it to anybody at first. And then grant strings are what can, where can you do it? What can you do? I think that's uh, ID is the scope type is the resource type and then actions are what can you do with it so basically this i can do everything within this boundary within this organizational scope basically okay now we now that we have our organization all kitted out that's ready to go the next thing to do is create a project scope so we are going to create a project scope called HUT Infra One. So this would be my infrastructure that supports HUT One's organization. And you'll see that the scope ID is the org scope. So this project is going inside that org scope. Now that we have a project, we can create a host catalog and populate that host catalog with hosts and a host set. And then finally, we can create a target. So here's our host catalog. We're just gonna call it backend servers and reference that project scope, HUT1 infra. And then we're also going to create some backend servers. These are boundary hosts. And for that one, we are going to reference our variable that has our backend server IP addresses. And for the address, we'll just go through the keys in there to get the IP address that's in our variable. And then finally, in here, we are going to reference the host catalog we just created. So these hosts will be created in that host catalog. And then the next resource is to bind them up in a host set. We're putting them together, right? So we are going to call this backend servers SSH for whatever reason. Maybe we're gonna be connecting to them via SSH. The host catalog ID, what catalog is this host set going in? And then what hosts will be the member? Well, we'll run through the list of backend servers we just created before and grab the host ID for each one. All right, so at this point, we've got our catalog, we've got our hosts, and we've put them in a host set. Now we can create our target. That's the last thing. So we're gonna create a boundary target. We have to tell it what type of target this is, what protocol does it does. I believe TCP is the only one that's supported at the moment. And for the scope ID, it's gonna be that same project ID that we did before. And then for host set IDs, we're just going to grab that host set ID. So you can have more than one host set in here, apparently. I'm not sure how exactly how that would work, but we're just going to reference our one host set. So that's everything. And I know that was kind of a lot, right? Let's go ahead and fire up another uh, PowerShell terminal, and we'll go ahead and go into today's 1020. Yay! And we'll go ahead and do a Terraform in it to initialize this configuration. There we go, initialize, no problem. It downloaded the most recent version of this resource provider for Boundary. We'll do Terraform apply, and we'll just do an auto approve here. Auto approve, woohoo. And it should create all this stuff really fast since everything's running locally. It's not like it has to reach out to a cloud or anything like that. All right, so we added 12 resources. If we bounce back over to this host sets here. Let's go back all the way up to the global side of things. And we can see we now have a taco one, taco hut one as an organization. We can go into that. Here's our hut taco hut one organization in there. We have projects. That's what we were looking for. Awesome. We've got our projects in our users. We have me in our roles. We have that admin role we created in authentication methods. Here's our password-based authentication method. We can go into here and see that under accounts that there is an account in here and it's associated with my user. So if we go back to users and click on my user and under accounts, we can see there's the account that links me to an authentication method I could use to log in. If we go to projects and click on our HUT1 infra project, we've got our host catalog, We've got our backend servers in that host catalog. And remember, in there, we've got hosts here. So we've got two hosts. Those hosts are in a host set. And there we go. There's our hosts in the host set. And then we can go to targets and see that we have one target. And it is using the host set backend servers SSH. So everything was created successfully by that provider. That's pretty cool. 
going forward, if you know you've got boundary running, what could you do with that? Well, if you know you already have boundary running and you've got the credentials to configure it and add new information, next time you're spinning up infrastructure in your cloud, you could, as that infrastructure comes up, also add that infrastructure to your boundary configuration to grant access to it to whoever needs that level of access. So that would be more focused. You could create a new project for that. You, in that project, you could create the new host sets and the targets and everything. Just make that part of your standard Terraform build for your infrastructure. So that's something I actually want to show, but that's not quite ready yet. What I'm going to do next week is I actually want to deploy the reference architecture for Boundary. They have one for AWS. I'm going to set this up to deploy in Azure instead, and then we can see how we ha can create a whole process where Boundary is in front of infrastructure that's also being deployed by Terraform. We can kind of put a bubble around the whole thing. So that'll be next week, but that does it for me for this week. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked what you saw, please share and subscribe. And until tomorrow, stay healthy and stay safe out there. Bye for now.